how you use the internet is about to fundamentally change. There's going to be a new AI layer between you and every single app that you use. Google, Microsoft, Claude, they're all racing towards that future. And OpenAI's new release of Atlas Browser is our first real glimpse of what that future could look like. Now, instead of just talking about it, I actually put their agent mode to the test for the last 48 hours. I tasked it with scheduling 50 of my YouTube shorts and even trying to automate my entire post-meeting workflow. What I found is a clear preview of what's next for all of us. Let's get into it. And this is the race to dominate that layer is what I'm talking about. So here on the right-hand side, we have the agentic layer. Say this is you, this is the internet. Between the two of you is going to be an agent that takes all the actions on your behalf. And every single one of the major players are already building out features that are feeding into that future. So for instance, we have Google that has the ability to track your screen and give you feedback on what's happening on the screen and what to do next. Claude already has its Chrome extension that allows it to take actions on your behalf that's in research preview today. We have Microsoft that has had Copilot inside of Edge for a while. It's mainly a, a minimalistic feature that allows you to read, but eventually it will write. We also have Perplexity that released their Comet browser a while back. And then finally, we have OpenAI's recent release of their Atlas browser, all of which are trying to push towards this future where it sits between you and the internet. And for this new release of the Atlas browser, really the only two features that I wanna talk about in this video that most people will care about are memory and agent mode. So for memory, what's happening with this feature is the AI is going to be able to track all of your actions over time. So if you forget about something, you want it to bring that up for you, it'll be able to do so. And for instance, say there's an article that I read a week ago. I'm like, hey, I read that article in Energy. What was that about and who wrote it? It'll pull that up for me. Or maybe there's an email I received from somebody three weeks ago. I'm not really sure who sent it, but I have a general idea of what the topic was about. I can have the AI go to my inbox, pull that up and grab it for me. That's on the memory side. What's more interesting to me is on the agent side. And the agent mode is going to take autonomous actions on your behalf. And its ability to achieve more and more complex tasks over time will increase. Instead of just talking about this, I wanna show you what the browser looks like. So here we have the Atlas browser. So I'm gonna do a hard refresh so you can see what this looks like. So we're on LinkedIn for now. And on the right-hand side, we have a chat screen. So the chat screen is where you can do all the different stuff with the AI. The AI is interspersed throughout the browser in different areas, but this is the one we're gonna focus on for now. So on the right-hand side, we have a pop-up here that says agent mode. We can also enable agent mode with a plus sign here. So if I go to plus sign and I go to agent mode, it's going to immediately turn that on. Once I've turned it on, you'll see a few things pop up down here at the bottom right-hand corner. First, it states that this is the agent, but also it says that it's logged in. So you can see we have logged in and logged out, and I can see my head's in the way. So I'm gonna quickly move my head out of the way for a second. So you can see we have logged in and logged out. So logged in allows it to be logged into all the different pieces of software that I have access to. So that could be Gmail, all the SaaS tools I have, anything. And then logged out is the opposite. So for most people, the most useful and utility oriented thing is going to have it being logged in. So I'm gonna keep it logged in. Another thing I'll call out here is in the settings. So if we go to the settings in the top right hand corner, I go to settings. And here, if I go to agent mode at the very bottom, there's a system instructions area where you can put in system instructions that will apply to all the different sites that the AI goes to. For me, this is going to be one of the most important features that OpenAI builds on in the future. Because if I have a series of really complex activities that I want the AI to do when I go to certain websites, I wanna have basically a GPT project or custom GPT per activity for that website. So I wanna have a series of custom instructions that I can feed into this AI. So anytime I go to that website and I do a certain thing, the AI should then follow those custom instructions to the T to achieve a very complex task. So that's the agent mode side. And then for the memory piece, if you jump into personalization, you go in here, you can see that it's referencing memory saved for here. So we have memories being saved here. We have reference chat history being saved and browser memories being saved. You can turn all of these off if you prefer to have privacy. But in this case, we're focused on utility and getting the benefit from the AI. So I'm gonna leave it all on. And as a quick note, that's pretty important to call out is this browser currently is only available for Mac users, but it will eventually be available for Windows users. Plus it's uh, the agent mode that I'm talking about mainly here is only available for pro and plus users at the moment, but eventually as with Windows, they'll roll this out to all the users. The amount of usage you'll get will vary, obviously based off of how much you're paying, but either way, most people will likely get access to this. Let's jump into the examples. So this first example I wanna show you is the 50 YouTube shorts that I gave it. So here's the context. I had 50 shorts that I uploaded to YouTube and I wanted it to schedule these shorts out on a daily basis. So every single day I publish a short on YouTube. This would have probably taken me, I would say 40 to 60 minutes to do manually. But instead what I did is I created a very specific prompt. I gave it to the agent in agent mode and I allowed it to work in the background. 
So there was some success here, but also some failures. And it's important to, for us to find the edge cases of what's available today and be aware that these edge cases are only for today and likely will be fixed within the few months. So the first edge case that I found is that there are a few restarts that I had to make. For instance, it would probably complete five to 10 shorts. It would stop and then seek my guidance for continuation. That's kind of annoying. So I had to basically tell it to continue, to continue, continue over and over, and eventually it finished. But it finished in a way that actually did what I wanted it to. It scheduled them all out for daily publishing. And here's actually a quick video of what it looks like when it's happening uh, in, in kind of a live play. So I'm gonna play this video so you can see it. And quick note, I'm gonna run this probably at three to four X speed because it is quite slow when it moves through the browser, and when it's taking actions on your behalf. That's why I recommend kicking it off, moving it to the background and doing a different task in a different tab and or a different browser. And right now I have this running out about three X speed. So I'm gonna play it out. You're gonna see that it's gonna to go to the different screens, click through the different screens that it needs to click through to achieve the given task. So it goes next, it goes none of the above, it goes to submit rating, it goes to next again, and it's clicking through these screens as I would have to do for 50 separate videos. And once it gets to the screen where it has to schedule it, you can see it goes to the date there, it clicks the date, and it then goes to the time frame, updates the time frame where it needs to, and then it takes a second to then click schedule, but it eventually does. So this is the basic process as it goes through and schedules one post, but imagine it doing it 50 times in the background for me. Quick pause in your regular programming. This video is brought to you by me. So two quick things. First off, Blow is a free link to a 30-day AI insight series. It's completely free. You'll get 30 insights in your inbox of how you can apply AI to your business and your work. The second thing is if you'd like to work with me, Blow are a series of offerings to see if there's a good fit between the two of us. With that being said, let's get back into the video. So that's our first example. And I'm gonna show you the exact prompt I used here as well. So you have a good context and idea of the prompt I gave it because I'm trying to be as specific as possible with this agent to ensure that it can achieve the task that I've given it. So at the top, I'm providing it the context and the task I want it to do. So the context states that I have 65 shorts that I've uploaded into YouTube already. And that I want it to publish all of these uh, one day out from each. So one, one day at a time. And then here is where I give the very specific sections of where it has to go. I say you have to click you have to click on edit draft you then have to select next then you have to scroll down and then you have to select this section i'm being very specific on what it needs to do step by step and at the very end i ask it to go ahead and start and just do one to prove to me that i can do it effectively after it achieves one i then say go ahead and do the rest and i'm sure there's going to be a lot of people in the comments saying oh well can't we do this today can we already automate the process of our websites and we can there are different tools we can use to automate the clicking of buttons on sites and things like that but the issue with this approach today is that it relies on code, so it takes a while to write the code. Also, it's very brittle because if any UI changes occur, it's going to break immediately. Then we'd have to fix those specific steps in the automation. But with AI and using AI agents, it's much more reliable because it can adjust as we go with the UI. If the UI changes, it can adapt to that automatically. It understands the intent of what we're trying to achieve so we don't have to be as specific as writing code. And with this approach and having it be more adaptable, it can handle really any site changes and still achieve the task without you having to do anything. And that for me is very attractive. And I'm sure it's very attractive to many of you as well. Let's jump into the second example where we're trying to automate the entire post meeting process. Now the post meeting process I wanted it to automate is this flow here. So I'm gonna feed it a transcript from a meeting that I just had. Once it gets the transcript, it needs to draft a follow-up email from that meeting. After it's drafted the email, it needs to find the attendees in the meeting and then send the email to those attendees. After it's sent the email of, of that we've drafted, it needs to then go to our CRM or a task tracker and update the specific action items for me and the task tracker for that meeting. These are a lot of steps for an AI to achieve in one go. And I ran into a series of issues when using agent mode inside of Atlas. The two primary issues that I ran into for this example is first is that it would stop mid flow. So it maybe achieve three or four of the five tasks and then just stop without doing anything else. So I'd have to go in there and kind of poke it and prod it to get it to work. And the other thing that was slightly annoying is that the action items themselves were sometimes misrepresented, giving somebody else's action items to me. And then also the email tone was off based off of the types of emails that I prefer to write. And the main insight we can take away from this is that when using agent mode inside of Atlas is we need to constrain the tasks to be somewhat micro and individual to start. Because from this example and from other examples that I ran without showing it here, is that it struggles when you string together a series of tasks that are somewhat complex in nature. And our third and final example here is LinkedIn comments. So here's the task. I have a series of comments below the posts that I like to post on LinkedIn. And I often don't have time to reply to the comments, but I would like to. So what I did is I outsourced that to agent mode and said, okay, I want you to reply to all the comments from the posts that I've put out in the last 48 hours. 
and make sure that the replies are succinct, one to three words, and the overall results were okay. They weren't horrible. What I found is I needed to iterate on the initial prompt that I provided probably three to five times. After I iterated on it and fixed some of the minor issues, it was able to complete most of the replies and only missed a few from the last 48 hours. And here again is another video walkthrough. So I'll, I'll open this up. I'll expand it out so you can see it. And this is probably gonna be running at four to five X because it did take a while for it to figure out where the post was, where the comments were, figuring out which comments were posted in the last 48 hours and a series of other things. But you can see it's clicking through the posts right now. It's going to the comment section, seeing the timeframes associated. And you can see here, it starts to uh, actually reply. So it hits reply to the person that gave me a comment. It puts in a two word reply, and then it selects, it actually doesn't select reply here. It asks for approval. So it says, hey, can I reply on your behalf? I say, yes, this is global approval now. You can go off and do it for, for the foreseeable future. You don't have to keep on asking me. So it hit reply, did it for me. That was done. And now it's gonna to go to the next comment. It's going to then add a reply, hit reply and continue. And this basically goes on for probably I'd say 20 minutes or so. And it completes around 20 to 25 replies. And here's the specific prompt that I landed on after the three to four iterations. And I wanna again, show you this so you can get an insight of what worked and what didn't. For this first segment of the prompt, we're limiting both the time frame and the runtime of the agent mode. So we're saying we only want you to look at the last 48 hours because I know if I said look for the last 50 days, it would take way too long for the AI to then look at that and it would be too complex for it to achieve. So I limited the constraints and said only the last 48 hours. And in addition to that, I said only those that I've not replied to yet. So we're trying to limit the constraints even further. Then I provide more specifics on how it should reply to the comments. So it needs to select the reply button below the comment, ensuring that they're adding the person when they reply. I'm calling out the tone saying that it should keep a similar style to how I like to reply to comments. And at the very bottom, I've added this critical component because this is something I've learned through iteration. This was probably the fourth or fifth iteration when I added this, is I needed to call it the specific importance of selecting the reply button after it was done. And then emphasizing the importance of doing this one at a time so it would actually enforce the completion. And without this minor addition at the bottom, it would have just drafted a bunch of replies below the comments, never selecting the button to reply. That's something I ran into, so I had to add this to say, do this one at a time, ensure that you press reply each time. And this then fixed that issue. And after running through those examples, I wanted to kind of give you a bit of a glimpse into the future of what I perceive going to happen in the next probably three to six to nine months. So right now, today, we're able to achieve simple tasks with agent mode and other tools that can control our browsers with AI. We can have them reply to LinkedIn posts, we can have them summarize pages and take minor actions that have few steps. But likely in the next one to three months, we'll start to be able to chain more and more complex tasks together, such as automating the post meeting stuff that I shared with you. So drafting the email and updating my CRM all together, all in one go. And then finally, and I'm not sure how long, maybe nine to 12 to 16 months, we'll be able to outsource entire activities to these agents where we can say, based off of my expenses from the last month, can you manage those for me, get them all organized and set up, set it up for my accountant. This is pretty ambitious. I'm not sure how long this will take, but that's where they're trying to go. This is the end goal. And in that end goal future, we're likely going to transition from typing these very extensive and lengthy prompts to simply talking to the AI that remembers what we've gone and what we've done. It knows how to achieve these more complex tasks without us intervening. And it really turns into that whole kind of Iron Man Jarvis future that people like to talk about, where you're asking your AI to take tasks on your behalf and going off and doing that agentically inside of your browser. And here are just a few key takeaways. First, there is a new abstraction layer being built between us and all the applications that we use in the internet. And all the major companies are converging on what this layer could look like based off all the features and models are creating. And next, there's an interesting correlation between how much progress has been made in the world of coding and AI and how that's gonna be directly connected to browser-based agents. Because with a browser, an agent has an environment that it can test and learn from and self-correct as it takes certain actions. There's a higher likelihood that it knows that it did something wrong or right based off the environment that we put it inside of. And it's not necessarily as good as a coding environment, but it's a pretty strong place to start when the AI can learn from its actions. And with that point, it's important to note that the limitations today are current and temporary and progress is very fast and will continue to be fast. So a lot of the issues that people complain about today will be fixed in the coming months. And as I said many times, as business owners and leaders, it's important to prepare now for that future that's coming very fast in the next six to 12 months, where we'll be able to outsource 
either medium or large complex tasks to agents to take on our behalf so we can then refocus our attention on things that are more strategic for our businesses. And that's it. That's the video. So if you enjoyed this, reshare it with your friends. And remember two things. First off, we have the free 30-day AI insight series, completely free. You'll get 30 insights in your inbox of how you can apply AI to your business and your work. Second thing is if you'd like to work with me, below are a series of offerings to see if there's a good fit between the two of us. And with that being said, there should be a video around here that the YouTube gods thinks that you'll love. See you next time.